Zayed bin Rashid Azayani, thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us. You're here today leading the biggest trade delegation uh, to Israel from Bahrain since the signing of the Abraham Accords. Is that moving us one step closer to getting that free trade agreement signed and finalized? Uh, first of all, I'm very delighted to be here uh, back in Israel. This is my third trip. And like you, you said, this is the first trip. What's unique about it? This is the first trip that I come with a business delegation. Uh, it was designed in that way. The first trip we came here to establish the accords, to, to talk on a government level. Uh, today we're at a point where we think there has been very much achieved on the government to government side. And it's time that we, we uh, introduce the private sector to each other at close distance in a formalized way uh, so that they take over uh, the initiatives of the pre, uh, Abraham Accords. Uh, for us, it's very important that we achieve the maximum out of the Abraham Accords, so creating prosperity. And prosperity comes from investments, from trade, and from the private sector, uh, not necessarily from government to government. And we're very optimistic that the, with the tra free trade agreement being concluded by the end of the year, it will even facilitate for more trade and more investment opportunities between members of the private sector on both the you, countries. You hope it will be signed by the end of this year. Will, will that help boost trade? Because it is quite modest at, at the moment compared to the trade between Israel and the UAE. Yes, it is. It is very modest. It's not what we aspire to. Uh, the silver lining is that it has grown five times between 22 and 21. So there is positive signs. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why we have a private uh, dele a delegation from the private sector here today, because they are the driving force behind trade. Uh, the UAE maybe has done that before us, uh, and they've visited here uh, more often and, and much more, and that's normal that we see the numbers bigger there. It's also uh, uh, relevant because our economy is not as big as the UAE, uh, so therefore the opportunities wouldn't be as big, but we see the trade levels today as being the tip of the iceberg and the opportunities being much bigger uh, in the future. And we're not just focusing on trade because trade is the, verse, the, the very lowest step in a business relationship. We would like to see more investments and joint ventures. And that is really the ultimate goal, to have something sustainable and long-term trade increases, decreases year to year, but investment is more solid, it creates job, it creates export value, and creates transfer of technology as well. One of, an example of, of what you've just spoken about, uh, these uh, long-term projects, is the, the recent agreement on agriculture and, and bringing food security that was signed uh, in, in Elat yes. um, earlier this month. Mm -hmm. And Jordan and Morocco also sent delegations. Do you hope that that's a, an example of cooperation and how it can bring food security to the region? Uh, Israel has a strong track record in, in the field of food security uh, and agriculture, whether it is uh, you know, land or sea. Uh, and, and Bahrain today imports the majority of its food, uh, so we would like to create more of a local uh, capacity and local food products that are consumed or, or grown in Bahrain. So Israel uh, is, is the perfect partner for this. Uh, uh, and this is why we are looking to, to explore the options with Israel moving forward in this field. I recently spoke to the Israeli ambassador in Bahrain and he told me he really hoped to get more visitors uh, coming to Bahrain from Israel and vice versa. Um, what do you think is holding tourism back at the moment? Today we have a dedicated Minister of Tourism. She is just handling the tourism portfolio. Uh, one of the reasons why we came on my second visit is to participate in the tourism show here in Tel Aviv. Uh, we had a stand to represent Bahrain and we've seen positive impact out of that, a growth in the number of tourists. Uh, I'm also the chairman of Gulf Air, our national carrier. We started with two frequencies a week. We're up to three now and we're looking to build that up towards a daily service to Bahrain, which we think will facilitate a lot of the convenience and travel between the two countries. Uh, we are yet to see uh, reciprocal uh, tourism from Bahrain to Israel, and we haven't honestly seen any initiatives of, of Israeli uh, tourism promotion in Bahrain, so maybe that could help as well. 
uh, the flow being too, you know, two-sided instead of more one-sided. But on the general number of Israelis coming to Bahrain, we've seen a good increase. Uh, we would like to see more, of course, but it's it's. Do you have any theories as to why Bahrainis are holding off coming to Israel? It's not a matter of holding off. Uh, it's, uh, I think one, one is that we haven't seen any Israeli promotion in Bahrain. Uh, two is that it's new. Uh, they are you know, used to going to certain places. So as a newcomer, new market will take time to get you know, considered. Uh, what I can tell you, though, that all those who've come here have come back with positive uh, experiences and impressions. Uh, and that will definitely help. A, a word on uh, defence, because that is another area where Israel and Bahrain uh, cooperate strongly. Um, we just had a few days ago um, Israeli paratroopers taking part in an event uh, over Bahrain. That was very exciting. Would you say that defence is at the heart of this relationship and is that having an impact on the region? Uh, Bahrain has always been uh, a friendly nation, an open nation. Uh, we we are uh, you know despite being a small nation we, we play on the on the global scene in terms of you know promoting peace tolerance uh, we we've, we've been an island uh, open to all ethnicities races and and uh, you look at the communities in Bahrain they're made up of many countries we're very delighted to welcome uh, His Holiness the Pope next week in Bahrain. So this again is, is a testament to the tolerance and openness of Bahrain uh, and, and uh, if it is Israel or any other friendly nation that works to the security of the, of the uh, region and the greater Middle East, I'm sure you'll find Bahrain to be uh, a competent and equivalent partner in that uh, field. As you may have noticed, Israel is holding elections in a couple of days' time. Uh, just last week, the UAE's foreign minister issued uh, a warning. He said that an extreme right government in Israel could actually undermine ties with the UAE. Is that something you're concerned about in Bahrain? We've come a long way to get where we are today. Uh, and it took us 70 plus years. Uh, but in the, in the last two or three years since signing the Abraham Accords, we've also come a long way in achieving positive growth in our relationships. And it would be really uh, uh, unfortunate for anybody who came in to, to reverse the cycle because it's taken us so long to get to where we are today. You also have to keep in mind that the rest of the Arab world is watching and they are looking to see whether us, uh, UAE, Morocco, have, have really progressed with this because who's going to be next? The aim is not really to stop at three countries, uh, plus, of course, Jordan and Egypt, who's, who's been there before us. Uh, so I think whatever government comes to Israel, I think they should be mindful enough uh, not to shake the composition of the Abraham Accords because a lot is riding on it for the region, not just for Israel and Bahrain or the UAE. Uh, and I think uh, the general perception, even for me, with the very little interaction I had with, with people in Israel, uh, outside of my official duties, I had a couple of chances on my previous events, uh, visits to go just out on the street and, you know, you meet people, you talk to them, and, and they don't know me as an official of the government of Bahrain, but when I say I'm from Bahrain, generally they're all welcoming and they're, they're excited about this new chapter in our relations and I think uh, the momentum is positive and it's on our side, we should keep it going and growing. So when you, when you hear statements from someone like Itamar Ben-Gvir, uh, the far-right political leader who could make it into power uh, next week, are you worried about that? Do you think that's worrying for Israel's future? Um, yeah, I mean, we, we'd rather not hear such statements. But I think we have to look at this as a long-term project and we have to look at the bigger picture. Uh, uh, in, in every nation you'll have people who are for and against any political direction. Uh, but I think we, we have to look at the bigger picture and we have to take the positives and, and put them out there to show the rest of the world that you know, our venture was successful.